This is Sam. He's a pretty special monkey. You see, unlike all other male squirrel monkeys, Sam can see the color red and happily proves it in exchange for a sugar pellet. And squirrel monkeys, so all the males have color vision deficiency, so they're all colorblind. But not Sam here, whose ability to smoosh his face against the pink dots on a touch screen represents a culmination of color vision research by Jay and Maureen Knights. Now, Maureen is a, a, a geneticist and genetic engineer and I'm a neuroscientist, and, and so we put together our expertise. Not to bring male squirrel monkeys up to par with females. Our whole goal was eventually to be able to do this in people. Colorblind people, many of whom might be green with envy, watching a monkey see red. There are a lot of misperceptions about colorblindness. Oh, you must see only in black and white, like a black and white television. But, um... Almost everybody who's colorblind is not completely colorblind. 99% of colorblind people have the red-green variety. This doesn't mean they can't see red or green, they just experience red or green differently from normal people. And this small gap in the color spectrum can taint even the most basic experiences. A red pepper and a green pepper almost look identical. A green banana and a yellow banana, again, they're very, very hard to tell. A similar frustration can occur at the butcher's counter. A colorblind person is pretty lost at being able to tell the nice bright red meats uh, using their color vision. As a matter of fact, if you, you can't be a USDA meat inspector, you know, unless you have perfect color vision. Other jobs are difficult or impossible. People want to be a pilot or they want to be a nurse. A nurse cannot really be colorblind. You know, there's all those pills that are all those different colors. If the patient's turning blue or if they're, you know, flushed and they're red. Or if you're a colorblind videographer trying to make a video about color vision. It just makes your life extremely difficult. Preach on, Dr. Knights. Oh, honey, let's, let's take a vacation to Vermont and see the beautiful autumn colors. You know, the sunset. Oh, sweetheart, isn't it so romantic? Yeah, the color of the sky looks pretty much the same. You can start to see why 1 in 12 men, or 1 in 200 women, affected by the disorder might be interested in a cure. So in 1999, we decided that we would give it a shot and try to see if we could do the cure. Easier said than done. Colorblind isn't an illness. It's 100% genetic. Right. right. So that, well, that... <laughs> Let's back up for a second. At the back of your eye is your retina. And inside that are three types of photoreceptor cells called cones. There's one most sensitive to red, one most sensitive to blue, and one most sensitive to green. And each of these cones and their corresponding pigments are encoded by specific genes. So humans and other old world primates have two genes on the X chromosome that encode visual pigments. One encodes the red cone pigment and the other one encodes green cone pigment. But if you're colorblind... Only one type red or green is expressed. Finding that faulty gene was relatively simple. Replacing those genes inside the cone cells with the right genes, well, that's a bit trickier. You have to have some way of delivering a gene to the cells that you're trying to treat and not into other cells. Fortunately, nature has crafted a really powerful method of forcing DNA into a very specific cell, a virus. The virus that we use is called adeno-associated virus, and people call it AAV. Its main advantage is that you don't get an, an immune response against the virus. So while researching how to load the therapeutic gene into the virus, the Knights has trained a pair of colorblind male squirrel monkeys, Sam and Dalton, to take a colorblindness test. Every single morning, the monkeys wake up, and before they have breakfast, they go, OK, it's time to have our color vision tested and the monkey is trained to touch the place where they see, you know, that colored blob, and then they get a treat. They can be most efficient and get the most rewards if they're, you know, just touch with their nose and then they get down and, you know, get their little treat. And just to be thorough, we also ran untreated animals. You know, occasionally they might just by chance touch the right spot, but over trials, you know that they can only really get it right all the time if they have normal color vision. Once the monkeys were trained and the virus was ready, Sam and Dalton underwent a fairly elaborate procedure. A vitro retinal surgeon slipped the needle underneath the retina. Then the fluid is infused in order to treat the whole entire back of the eye. It wasn't immediately obvious that it worked. 
and we didn't know how long it was going to take for them to change their behavior after the pigment was expressed robustly. Now when you look back and you see the difference between the animals, it's so dramatic, you know, it's an amazing thing and it amazed us. Although the FDA has yet to approve the procedure for human trials, recently the Knights have developed a one-shot version of the cure. It's like an everyday shot that would take, you know, one second, just a shot right into the eye. And while getting a shot in your eye sounds terrifying to some, it's a small price to pay for living out a dream, or getting to see a sunset in all its glory, or maybe just not leaving your house dressed like this. For Science Friday, I'm Luke Groskin.